Hi guys, welcome to the 33rd video of the Love Bubber 450 question series. So we have done almost, I think, 60% of searching and sorting. We have finished arrays, matrix, and strings. So roughly around maybe 50, 60 problems we have done. I'm not sure exactly how much, but if you have not watched a single video or if you want all the videos, I have put them in a playlist. You can check the playlist in the description and also you'll find the link of this Google Sheet in the description. You can also check it on Code Chef. Just type Love Bubber series. So it's on Code Chef also. It has already got around 5,500 views. So thank you for all your support till now. Please continue to do so. And uh, I shall also keep giving you more and more better solutions as and when I find them. And we will keep solving the problems. So in today's video, we will do the first problem that we will do is kth element of two sorted arrays. So we will be given two sorted arrays of sizes A and B, sorry, of size M and N, okay? And an element K, we have to find what would be the kth position element in the final sorted array. That means basically this question they're asking us to merge the two arrays and then we have to find out the kth element of that complete sorted array. So let us take a small example and I will show you. For example, if array A is equal to say 1, 3, 5 and array B is equal to 2 and 4. So final sorted array will be what? Final sorted array, that is A plus B. What will it be? One, two, three, four, five. Now, if K is equal to four, so what are we supposed to return again? So, we have to return the kth element. So if k is equal to four, then is it zero based indexing or one based indexing? So fifth element means, yeah, so it is I think one based indexing. So we will have to return four like this. So we will not be given this. Okay, we will not be given this. We will only be given like this and we have to find the answer. This can be done in O of n space, but how to not use extra space? I want to do it in O of one space only. We can just use O of n space. Like we have, I hope you all know the code for merging. I really expect you to know the code for merging two sorted arrays. We have already done merging two sorted arrays in the previous videos, please check it out. Please go watch how to merge, how to merge two sorted arrays in the previous videos I have discussed. So this is the same concept, the same concept, but we don't need extra space. We can do it in O of one space only. How I have done it in O of one space, what I have done, I have just taken an extra pointer. See, it is anyway two pointer, right? Merging of two arrays is going to be a two pointer method only. So for that first, you need to know how to merge two arrays. If you don't know, please go check that out. So if you know that, then we'll just keep an extra variable. Suppose we will say index. We will keep incrementing index. And when it reaches K, we will store the answer like this. We just have to check whenever it reaches K, that element is the answer. So in this merging concept, just add this, just keep an index variable. So just keep an index variable and keep checking, keep incrementing it as and when you keep performing merging operation. Okay. And when it reaches K, just take the answer. Just store the answer of that particular index. For example, in this condition, I 
plus plus we are doing right if we are doing i plus plus that means we are we are where we are in the first array we are in the first array so this problem we should just know one thing what should we know we should know if we are if we are in the first array or second array if we are in the first or second array which array there are two arrays right a and b which one which one to take so this we should know where ever the current pointer is located located that is this index it is telling us right there we should just uh, store the um, element as answer and then break out from the loop so i really request you to solve this problem by yourself please learn merging of two sorted arrays if you know that code this question becomes very very easy it is very simple just keep an additional variables i think only two additional variables one to move the index and one to store the answer that's it so this was a kth element of two sorted arrays i am really confident you can do it on yourself you will have the code in the description to verify your answer if you go wrong somewhere you can check it out over there it is simple merging of two arrays only but with no extra space so coming to next problem next problem is bishu and soldiers so we have n soldiers and there'll be q uh, queries and every soldier has some power and bishu has some power so bishu can kill all soldiers whose power is less than or equal to m bishu has a power m okay bishu has some power let it be m he can kill all the soldiers which is less than m so we have to tell how many soldiers he can kill so we have to tell what count the number of soldiers he can kill and total sum of all their powers so let me erase this to explain the problem so what is the problem saying let us take this example let us say there are let us say there are seven soldiers let us say n is equal to 7 their powers are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 these are their powers and let us say there are three queries in the first query bishu's power is 3 as we can see from here bishu's power will be 3 okay so power in the first case is 3 so what we will do we have to check now we have to check how many people have a power less than 3 less than or equal to 3 so 1 2 3 so add all of them 1 plus 2 plus 3 is what 6 so we have to return number of people and their total power so this is how they are expecting us to give the answer how to do this using binary search how to do this using binary search linear search will anyway work in this hacker ank it is actually very silly you know if you give linear search also it will get the answer you can do brute force also that is why they say brute force very very easy but our intention is to solve in better manner to solve with the intention of it is asked in interview how to do it that is our intention so how to do binary search here so for binary search what we need so first of all for binary search we need to sort the array so first step is what one second i'll just remove this so first step is sort the array okay sort the array so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay then our power suppose it is 3 we have to find upper bound 
we have to find what upper bound of three. What is upper bound? The next greatest value. So for three in this array, next greatest value is this four. So all the elements before the upper bound, upper bound will point over here. Upper bound will point over here. But all the elements before this, their sum, and how many elements are there? That number. So this is an upper bound problem. And upper bound is the first element greater than the element that we are considering. So you can use STL in the coding round. They will not question you how you are solving the problem. But how to get this sum? How to get this sum? We need to build a prefix array. I think this is easy to understand. How to build prefix array? So our second step actually will be building prefix array. How to build prefix array? Just keep an array and keep adding the previous sum. So our prefix array will be 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 5, 15, then 21, then 28. So this will be our prefix array. Third and last step is to use upper bound. So this is the algorithm. First sorting, then prefix array, then upper bound for every query. For every query, we have to use upper bound. Prefix array we are building so that our job becomes easier. We don't have to calculate for every single query. Only we have to find upper bound. This upper bound will take log n time and this number of queries is n. So I think the complexity of this solution will be O of n log n, which is quite okay only. So this is how you implement upper bound. And whenever you're implementing upper bound, be careful about the index. Like if, the, if there is uh, no, if all the elements are greater than the power, then the answer will be zero. So be careful about this case. So whenever you're implementing upper bound, be careful about the index. Where is it pointing to? It should not, uh, it should not point outside the array. It will give error. That is why you have to first check if it is not outside the array. If it is outside the array, then just say the index is equal to n and then print prefix of index minus one. This prefix of index minus one will be sum of all the powers and index will be the number of people who you can kill. So I expect you to at least implement this STL based solution. If you are using Java or Python, you will have something similar to this upper bound of C++ STL. Something similar will be there, okay? So I'm not so sure about that, but please look into it. What upper bound does is it will binary search and find out the first element greater than the value that is being considered. So upper bound, we have to pass power. That is our input power. This is Bishu's power. This is what Bishu's power. Now, some of you might be thinking how to implement upper bound without using upper bound. How to implement the upper bound without using this upper bound function, this STL function. So let us say we are going to implement upper bound, okay? So what do we need? Suppose we will take array, we will take low, we will take high. We have to just do binary search. There is nothing else different here. We will just say while low is less than high. And what will our L be? L will be zero and H will be N. So while low is less than high, we have to just take int mid as L plus H minus L by two. If A of mid is less than or equal to given K. So we, we need K also, right? So K is the element that we are finding upper bound for. If A of mid is less than or equal to K, then what we are supposed to do? Then we are just supposed to say what? We are supposed to say low is mid plus one. 
we are going to search in right part we are going to search in the right part otherwise what we have to do search in the left part how to search in mid left part here there is a twist here high will be mid that's all so this equal to sign is there and high will be mid that's all the changes and ultimately we should return what we should return l ultimately return l this is how you implement upper bound without actually using stl if you want to write the binary search code for upper bound this is how you implement it so now you can practice how to do lower bound also try lower bound lower bound will be the first element which is equal to or greater equal to or greater upper bound is first element greater than the given value so this is the code for implementing upper bound without upper bound and now use it in the problem and then get the answer so i hope the solution was clear sort the array build a prefix array use upper bound so that's all for this video we will meet in the next videos and uh, stay safe till then keep learning keep solving and other content like uh, how to start development how to increase the cp level how to do all those things that will be coming shortly i have some college work right now so i am little busy with that so i'm really, really sorry for the delay but please be patient i'll bring that very soon please support me for that as you have always supported till now please continue to do so thank you all for your support see you in the next video take care have a good day bye Stay tuned.